mess Drop it in the water, let the daughter find an image with the rest She'll be learning how to breathe Spinning through identity, reveal another pretty little skin Save her mind hey guys welcome back or welcome to my channel my name is sanyu if you're new here hi i'm sanyu um i make faith-based and lifestyle content here on youtube um you're welcome to a segment that i like to call unfiltered which is a series of sit down talking videos where i basically we me and you basically go into faith life culture and everything in between so without wasting too much time let's get right into it from the title i feel like you can get an idea of what i'm going to be talking about but yeah basically we're going to be talking about how to get up when you fall right so I feel like this is a topic very near and dear to my heart because I'm a perfectionist in a way where if I feel like I won't do good at something, I'll give up immediately. And I found it very hard when I became a Christian. I found it very hard to get up when you fall, right? Because the whole concept of christianity is that you don't lean on your own strength or on your own plan or on your own whatever whatever you lean on god right so i found it particularly i found it particularly difficult when i was now called to lean on god right so yeah i feel like i've grown a lot since i first came to christ which was like 2020 i feel like i've grown a lot and i feel like i'm now kind of qualified to speak on the topic also do you guys like the comfy clothes or do you want to start like them start dripping for the talk sit down talking videos because i can do either but i'm i'm digging the comfortable vibe it's giving i mean your living room and we're just chatting but yeah so when i fall i feel like my first thing is confess like confess your sins to god right and for the longest time i was like confess like it's giving if you don't confess god to like if that makes sense right but i think i've come to realize that confessing is more for you than for god right because when you conf like first john 1 9 talks about when you confess then god can purify you and heal you and whatnot so confess to god and then this one will be a bit controversial but confess possibly to someone and i know you're thinking like these people talk 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 but james five sixteen talks about in fact let me read it because James 5, 16 is, like, it's really, I feel like it encompasses the whole confess to one another, like, really well. So I'm just going to, like, quickly, quickly find it. I legit thought I wrote it down, but I did not write it down, apparently. Also, guys, I got a new mic, you know whatever nothing major i hope the sound quality is really good because the guy was really the guy who sold it to me was really hyping it up Okay, so that's James 5 verse 16 and it's talking about, what does it say? It says, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other 
so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective, right? So yeah, the church is supposed to be... This is why I feel like I'm always emphasizing and talking about you need to find a community or a group of people who are like-minded, right? Because there's no way you're going to go and confess your sins to someone who you feel like doesn't like you, which unfortunately is the case in a lot of churches, right? So, yeah, your relationship with God is personal. It's not private right so you need to be able to talk to someone right and the a key thing that i've learned please don't go talk about let's say you struggle with lust please don't go to your friend who also struggles with lust you end up validating each other to be blind leading blind go to someone who will give you cold hard facts but from a place of love, but cold hard facts, because that's what you need. You don't need someone's going to be like, it happens, it happens. Like, yes, someone should have compassion, but compassion to bring you to change, not compassion to make you feel okay with what you're doing, right? And then identify triggers. This, when I learned this, it blew my mind because. First of all, you have to know what makes you do certain things that you don't want to be doing, that you you want to stop doing, that you're trying to stop doing. So if certain places, people trigger certain things in you, you need to stay away, right? Because one thing about sin, guys, sin doesn't just do mbwila from nowhere. It's cultivated. And when I learned this out, like, oh my goodness, because... You know, you fall into sin or you do something you don't want to do. And you're like, I don't know how I did that. But, babes, you've been looking at pictures of half-naked women on your timeline for the longest. Right? You've been hanging around people who do A, B, C, D. And when you start doing A, B, C, D, you're shocked. Why are you shocked? Why are you shocked? Sin is cultivated. You cultivate an environment that's conducive for sin, right? The same way you cultivate an environment that's conducive for the Holy Spirit. Like when I heard, I think I was listening to a sermon by Stephanie E.K. Okafor, right? And when she dropped those bars, I was like, eh? Like it was, you know when... You're listening to a message, you're listening to a word, and it jumps out at you literally, and it's pointing you in the face, and it's like, because, like, that's so true and so real, and when you really think about it, you're like, oh, this makes so much sense. And then, like, once you confess, like, you confess, and you ask for forgiveness, and you talk to God about it, you talk to someone about it, you identify your triggers, you now have to start doing internal work, right? So your mind. I was literally talking to a friend of mine the other day. And I was saying, I was like, our generation is fortunate and unfortunate. Because we were exposed to so many things at like a young age. That our minds are literally wired in a way that's so accepting of wrong things. So accepting of sin. That for us, like when we come to Christ, it's literally a rewiring of our entire system. It's literally us rewiring our whole, like, our thought processes, our... It's like, that's why it's hard, right? Because we're rewiring everything we've been taught from TV, social media, you know, even people around us and stuff like that. That it's so, like, it's a big process. And I'm not in any way saying, like, okay, sin isn't okay, but sin happens, right? Everyone falls, right? And I'm not saying it's okay, but it happens. It does happen. And honestly, big ups to people who fall and get up because... 
in a way were literally programmed like that like i've gone off on a tangent what was the thing yeah so your thoughts the bible says proverbs 23 7 yeah as a man thinketh in his heart so is he your thoughts the things that consume your mind are the things you're going to reap and produce in your life in no way am i supporting manifestation or anything like that but it's real the way you think the things you feed your mind the things you dwell on are the things that are going to be produced in your life right so how are we going to reprogram our minds the bible is talking like that verse is thrown around a lot the be transformed by the renewing of your mind blah, 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 blah. how are we renewing our minds how are we rewiring our systems so we can make a conducive environment for god for the holy spirit for us to grow spiritually we're going to take captive every thought and bring it under the submission of christ i I'm going to put the verse in the bio, in the description, eh, bio, description. But we're going to take captive every thought and bring it under the submission of Christ. How are we going to do this? I love that you asked. We're going to do this by confessing the word of God into our lives. So you know how people have affirmations that they say daily. You need to have biblical affirmations. I remember um, 12th grade. Um, I feel like that was when I was like, oh no fire fire for christ so that was when i just got saved i used to do this thing where i wrote down like i prayed for like the longest time and god put three scriptures on my heart it was the one for daniel michelle abednego daniel michelle hananiah and the other one the one about them being 10 times better right that's the that's the scripture that was put on my heart and the jeremiah 29 11 and i think jeremiah won something the, there's the before you were born i knew you before you were formed i appointed you that one and the for i know the plans you have for me and the 10 times better one and i personalized them right so it was the scripture like the actual scripture then in brackets it was I am known, I am appointed, I am 10 times better. For God knows the plans he has for me, plans to prosper me, plans to give me a hope, plans to give me a future, right? And I had those on my bathroom mirror because I was like, okay, where am I not leaving my room in the morning without looking at my mirror? Like before stepping out of my room, going for class, I'm looking at my mirror. Before my mom, dad, uncle tells me, okay, it's time to hit the road, I'm looking at the mirror because I'm not leaving that thing how I'm looking. Like that's just, that, like that was my right. So I had them on the mirror, and I'd see them every day, every day. And like half a year in, not even half a year, like realistically two months in, it was in here, right? I remember specifically this one time I was late, like late. So I step out, right, and I'm walking, walking. Before I leave the door, I'm like, I I never said my my affirmations this morning. So I start saying them. I start reciting them because they're in there, right? And I kid you not, I feel like people who I was in high school with can attest to the fact that I was a student, guys. Like I was, I was, I loved school. I was obsessed with school. I would, I study English and it's like, who studies english like i don't know but for me i feel like studying english is a stretch i used to cram english i enjoyed studying i was studying like i was searching up like study techniques study methods study what 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 i was studying i had study group with my friends like it was just and school was enjoyable life was enjoyable right and back to my point me saying those things every day was changing me i never saw it at first right like the first day second day first month i never saw it right but then after two months i look back to how i was when i started saying the affirmations and how i am now like in that time and the difference is monumental right and there's that saying at uh at what 
one percent every day something like that you improve one percent every day with every week whatever but yeah like i saw that right so the way we renew our minds the way we rewire our minds is yes staying in the presence of god but guys the word of god when the bible says that god is active alive sharper than a double-edged sword the bible isn't joking it's true it's active it's alive but for you to activate it you need to step into it you need to step into the promises right i feel like i'm cooking you need to step into the promises you need to step into the word right and i think the bible even talks about verbally speaking these things i'll put a verse in the description but then there's obviously that common one there's power in the tongue and there is power how did god make the world guys he said let there be light he said let there be light right so and remember the power of god that created the universe right the power of god that raised jesus from the dead is at work in us so we if we're submitted we also have the power to speak right so if i'm speaking i'm 10 times better if i'm speaking um i'm known i am appointed i am blessed i am loved i am i am 10 times better i am a b c d then i will be 10 times better i will feel loved right yeah so that's controlling taking control of your mind is a big step in coming back from a fall right then now staying on the path right so okay so here we've confessed you know we've done all that we need to do and we are now lost my train of thought so we've confessed we have identified our triggers we're taking control of our minds our thoughts our actions now we have to stay on that path right and i feel like this is also a very hard thing but all i can say is that submitting to god and resisting the devil right so the bible says submit to god resist the devil and he will flee and yeah i mean it's as simple as that okay it's not really simple i won't i won't lie but submit to god resist the devil and he will flee okay so resisting the devil i won't lie us in our own strength in our own capacity there's nothing we can do to resist the devil But if we're submitted to God, then he'll give us the strength. Because especially in the day and age we are living in, unfortunately, the devil is all around and he's prowling like a roaring lion. And he's there, like he's all around. And one thing i've learned is that in my own strength in my own capacity there's really nothing i can do submitting to god every time i've tried to resist the devil in my own strength i've failed i've fallen right and honestly i've just learned that if you are in the presence if you are submitted it doesn't mean temptations won't come but you have the ability and strength to to resist right one thing that really helps is saying saying scripture out loud like there's so much power as i said previously there's so much power in verbally confessing scripture like it's actually crazy and overall i think i'd say that In my walk with Christ up until now, the temporary pleasure you get from sin is, as I, it's temporary, literally. But the aftermath, guys, I've had moments where, for whatever reason, I fall or whatever, and I can be in a slump for a month, six months. Okay, six months is a stretch, but like a month, right? Just for, it's really, sin isn't worth it. 
like i feel like once you genuinely experience god's love you want to stay there right and i feel like people who know christ when they fall like know christ when you fall it's really hard because you've you've felt god's goodness you've felt his grace and his love and his mercy and you know the weight of what christ did on the cross and then you come and do a mistake you feel like you've ruined your entire life but one thing i realized is that you thinking that a small mistake is going to change god's love for you is an insult to god it was a hard pill to swallow because I used to be champion, queen queen of wallowing in self-pity. I'll be like, no, I sinned. How am I going to get back? Like, I can wallow for a week, right? But when you're going somewhere with Google Maps directions, right? And you go the wrong way, you make a wrong thing. You don't keep going in the wrong direction saying, oh no, I missed my thing. So now I just have to keep going in the wrong direction. I just have to what? Or you don't just stop the car and you're like, oh, let me stay here because I'm lost now. No, you make a U-turn and go back and go on the right path, which is the approach we should also have. Um, And yeah. I think I have exhausted my time, my tips and tricks. Okay, they're not tricks and they're not tips. But I think, yeah, I've talked enough on the topic. And yeah, um, you guys should let me know if you are rocking with the sit down videos or you like the vlogs more or whatever. Someone said I should start a podcast. Would you guys be into that or not? Yeah, let me know. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys next week, Tuesday, I think. I believe I'll be posting on Tuesdays and Fridays. Tuesday, Friday. Tuesdays and Fridays. So, yeah. You guys stay safe, stay blessed, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, wait. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Popping up the mess. Drop it in the water. Let the daughter find an image with the rest. She'll be learning how to breathe. Spinning through identity. Reveal another pretty little skin. Save her mind.